Hello. Hi, everyone. That's me when I was 16. <laughs> Seemed appropriate. Um, I work at an advertising agency called Lean Mean Fighting Machine. I uh, work with my creative partner, Andy. Give us a wave, Andy, wherever you are. Whee! Handsome chap over there. Um, also, uh, a part of a collective called King's Og, and we do a bit of design work, uh, the odd jobs here and there, building, whatnot. Um, I'm going to talk about some pranks, but first of all, I'm going to talk about. Ooh, bloody hell! How did that happen? Well, I didn't choose that, but that was quite nice. Um, I'm going to talk about wrecked into the news. And what I mean by this is doing a project or a bit of work that um, sort of acts on something topical in the news. So you find something going on in the news, say it's coming up, say Mother's Day, and you do a bit of work that will um, sort of steal the news in the papers and whatnot. Um, so example is, a bad example of this uh, recently was uh, this. I think some of you might have seen it. Uh, Paddy Power decided that they thought this would be funny or useful for people, and it really wasn't. It was a bit distasteful. Um, that's a bad example of jumping on a story going on in the news. Um, a good example I saw recently was IKEA. For Valentine's Day, they said um, they gave you a token for a, a free, baby, uh, free cot for babies born nine months from today. So they're pretty much just encouraging sex. So I thought that was quite nice. Uh, another bad example um, is this one. Uh, Woolwich in quite a day is long before alleged shootings and beheadings of today. Uh, which is just distasteful and makes the brand look really bad. And this is a tweet just after uh, the beheading of, that, uh, of the soldier. Um, just makes the, bad look, the brand look really terrible. And they got taken down and everyone had a big uproar about it and they just look stupid. Um, now this is a, an example, a good example. And this came online a day after British Gas said they were going to increase their uh, gas prices. So I'll play you this video. Hello, what do you do for a living? Work for British Gas, do you? You wanker. And I'll give you put my bills up. Master's bank, you take that. You won't put them up no more. Great, one for you, and one for you. I'll give you one as well. You come here, I'll get you, you bastard. Come back. I'll give you central eating. You want central eating, babe? You've got it. Oh yeah, you take that. Oh, take my fancy money out of the wall, will you? Scum, you won't get no more of my money. No, gas bastard. Scum, you're all scum. Ooh, take that, take that. Ooh. Where's the next bastard up here? Hey! Hey! Come on, die, die, die. Oh, there you are, you bastards. We finally found you. Fish gas bastards, good. I'm gonna blow you to hell! Wankers! Wankers! Whee! This is it, you cunts! Let's have it out! You! Oh! This is it! Die! 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 Oh! That's it. That's the end of you lot. Um, uh, my two bosses at work made that video. Um, they made it because the British Gas had raised their prices and they thought, this is wrong. Um, so what can we do? This was the same week that Grand Theft Auto had, uh, had been released. Um, so they hired a, an old woman as an actress. They got her in. Um, they sort of, sort of taught her how to use the controller. She didn't have a clue what was going on, really. They gave her a, a script of what to say, just, you know, shout swear words and whatnot. They really tried to get her to say cunt. And she just about sort of mumbled it while she was playing. Um, and that got about two million views uh, within the first couple of days. And got on, have I got news for you at the end of the week? And my bosses were like little kids. They were giggling and having the best week of their lives. And um, that's the sort of stuff we're encouraged to do uh, where I work. Um, so me and Andy, uh, a while ago now, um, so everyone knows who this guy is, and if you don't, this is Sir Alex Ferguson. He was the uh, Man United football manager for 26 years or so, and he's notorious for chewing gum. Every game he'll chew a little bit of gum through the stress and the happy times. Um, and as he was coming up to his retirement, uh, me and Andy thought, we've got an opportunity here. We've got a chance to do something um, that might stop a journalist just writing, oh, Alex Ferguson has retired, and write our story instead. 
Um, so we had this idea that was to, here's a little mock-up of it. So this was to put a little bit of chewing gum in a nice container and, and then we are going to put it on eBay. And we sent this round to our bosses and one of them replied just going, um, just get on with it, just do it, stop asking, should we, should we not? Um, so we did and that was quite a good lesson for us because um, you know, sometimes when you do these sort of things, you um and ah about them for too long and you just don't get on with it. But this we got on and did. Um, this is how it actually looked. Um, so we put it on eBay in a little container. We got a little plaque made, a nice little velvet pillow. Um, me and Andy both chewed a bit of gum and then we, chew, we chose the most sort of spherical gum. We were very particular about this. Okay. It's got to look like a little football on a little plaque. Um, and we put it on eBay and the price started going up, it got 20 quid, 40 quid, it got to about 100 pound and we were over the moon, we were going 100 pound! Um, then it went up more, got to 500 pound, 750 pound, um, 750 pound, this guy tweeted about it, and this is one of my favourite tweets of all time, he said, rumoured piece of Alex Ferguson chewed up chewing gum in a glass box is currently going for 750 pound on eBay. Now th I hate hashtags, but this is the best hashtag I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag found on floor it's, it's just brilliant. I really like this. I want to meet this guy just for that reason. Um, then it sort of went up from there. It went to a grand, two grand, five grand, ten grand. Uh, we started, uh, we were just, I don't know, the rush of the feeling of it going up in thousands of pounds was just ridiculous. Um, it got to about 40,000 um, pounds. And my dad called me because I told him we were doing this. and. Um, my dad called me and went, uh, Josh, you fucking twat. What are you doing? It's like, your mum's worried. Like, you're going to go to prison. She's stressed out. I went, Dad, relax. It's fine. Um, it went up from 40,000 to 50, 60, 70, 80. I ended up getting to 150,000 pounds. Um, it was just stupid, really. Um, at this point, we thought, we're in for a, a, an early retirement from advertising. Um, but then, when it got to this price, eBay suspended our account. They just got rid of it. They just went, uh, suspended it with no reason for, for getting rid of it. Um, in a way, that was good for us, uh, apart from losing 150 grand, um, <laughs> because there was no sort of link back to us. A few sort of papers and uh, websites have started writing about it. Um, but there was no original source to ask questions. Um, and one of the first guys to write uh, an article about it was this guy, uh, Matthew Nash, who's a hero, because he's from the Metro, and he wrote this story about it, which was, Fergie's final chewing gum raises nearly half a million pounds for charity. Um, unfortunately, it didn't raise half a million pounds for charity. That would be nice. But he, because the Metro is such a credible source, he, <laughs> uh, he sort of, paved the way for all the other countries to jump on board and go, oh, this is a story to write about. It's from the Metro, it must be true. And um, we were getting tweets from all over the country every second. This guy, Robbie Harbison, Alex Ferguson's last piece of chewing gum, sold at auction for, I'd sell a bollock and an arm for that. Um, it was all over the world. It was such a, a good experience to go through. Um, and on and the next day, on Andy's birthday, actually, um, the Daily Star, <laughs> Daily Star did an article about it, and it's his birthday, and there's tits and his work on the same page. <laughs> I was so happy when I saw it. Um, my old granddad saw this in the paper and called me to say it was in one of the papers, but he couldn't remember which one, which is a night. <laughs> so we ran to the to Sainsbury's, going through every page, going, "Come on." Um, and this, is, this little quote here is what really made it quite a nice project to be involved in, was um, uh, we're a little sceptical about this one, but even if it is a joke, it was a well-crafted one. And I like that because it was you know, a joke, but it sort of says that anyone can, especially creative people, can do these sort of little jokes in there. Who's that guy? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, sort of says, as a creative people, we can do these sort of jokes and whatnot, but if we craft them well and do them professionally, and in this case, sort of people will believe it and buy into it. Um, and there we are, just before we went and got absolutely <laughs> wasted. Um, that's it. <laughs> Cheers.